China is currently grappling with a significant economic downturn. The one that until a few years ago seemed like a story of massive growth abruptly faded following the global pandemic, leaving deep wounds in Chinese social fabric. Growth rates are on the decline, and there's a troubling accumulation of debt. China's debt-to-GDP ratio soared to an unprecedented 288% in 2023. Yet this alarming figure fails to fully capture the stark reality that a significant portion of the debt was incurred to acquire assets that no longer yield sufficient returns to service the debt. Nowhere is this more evident than in the housing sector, where property sales have plummeted by a third since the pre-pandemic peak, and new construction has plummeted by 60%. This marks one of the most severe housing slumps witnessed in the past 30 years. Numerous Western analysts and political figures interpret this crisis as a reflection of Chinese leadership failure and the flaws within their economic system. However, it closely resembles the cyclic debt crises that have plagued capitalist nations throughout the course of the history. A relevant case in point is the Japanese crisis of 1989 which marked the culmination of decades of robust growth and soaring asset values driven by an inflated debt bubble. Japan's Nikkei stock index peaked at the close of 1989 before plunging nearly 80% over the following 13 years. Real estate prices endured a two-decade descent commencing in 1991. Since then, none of these primary asset categories has eclipsed its pre-crisis zenith. Once the fastest-growing major economy from 1954 to 1973, with an average annual growth rate surpassing 10%, shifted to the slowest growing, achieving a meager average growth rate only 1.75% annually from 1981 to 2023, China may face similar protracted challenges. China's remarkable rise was propelled by an even more pronounced surge in debt following Deng Xiaoping's market-oriented four modernizations in the late 1970s. Analogous to Japan during its post-war economic miracle, China's expansion was fueled by an export and real estate frenzy. In the realm of trade, China has capitalized on its utilization of low-cost labor to solidify its presence in international trade corridors. Notably, China's prosperity owes much to the Pacific Route, the paramount shipping artery linking China with its largest trading partner, the United States, along with other significant markets in North America, Latin America, Oceania, and East Asia. In 2019, the top three container trade lanes globally all trace their routes in the Pacific Route. When vessels traverse the Pacific Route, they navigate through the southern part of the East China Sea before veering northward through the Sea of Japan and the Okhotsky to access the North Pacific Ocean. Along this pathway, ships can access the western regions of Latin America, the Western United States, New Zealand, Australia, and Western Canada. If you're keen to delve deeper into how Chinese trade routes have reshaped international export dynamics, drop a comment on the video with China Economy and make sure to subscribe to the channel. In just under half a century, China evolved from an impoverished planned economy with minimal international trade to the world's leading exporter and the second largest hub of billionaires, trailing only the U.S. The eventual bursting of the Chinese economic bubble was always on the horizon. All cycles of rapid expansion, followed by contraction, inevitably draw to a close because the rapid accumulation of debt creates conflicting interests. Those of the bulls and bears. The optimistic developers in China are avidly seeking increasingly larger mortgage loans to uphold the upward trajectory of real estate prices. However, the pessimistic creditors primarily major banks and bondholders, are wary that price inflation will erode the value of their debt securities. The bubble is presently in a state of deflation. Chinese lenders have commenced reducing new loans and raising interest rates in accordance with the government's directives outlined as the three red lines. As the most heavily indebted Chinese investors confront bankruptcy or hastily liquidate assets to settle their debts, prices continue to plummet while opportunistic investors seize the opportunity to re-enter the market and acquire assets at discounted rates. This will ultimately stabilize the decline in prices, albeit at the expense of a rapid wealth transfer from debtors to creditors. The bears exploit the misfortunes of the bulls in every market crash. In China's scenario, there's an added complication. 
Many provincial and local governments have enjoyed substantial benefits and prestige from funding real estate ventures. Goldman Sachs economists estimate the total at $8.4 trillion, roughly 50% of GDP. Local governments are profiting akin to any other real estate developer. However, the central government in Beijing is increasingly siding with the bearish faction, worried about the depreciation of the renminbi, which hit a 16-year low in September. Beijing has intervened to prevent a rapid decline in the Chinese currency by selling foreign exchange reserves and purchasing renminbi. While the country possesses significant foreign exchange reserves, continued unchecked growth in the real estate sector would have eventually depleted these reserves. Beijing faces a significant political dilemma. Rising property costs have put a damper on consumer spending, especially among young individuals aspiring to buy their first homes. This has contributed to the recent sharp decline in marriage and birth rates. The nation that once had to enforce a birth control law now faces an issue with an aging population. The exorbitant price of land presents challenges for traditional retailers, prompting a shift of business to online platforms. Conversely, the downturn in property prices adversely affects those who have invested in real estate using mortgage debt, whether they are homeowners, speculators, or businesses. They risk encountering financial difficulties if the value of their properties falls below their outstanding debts. China's government bears much of the responsibility for triggering this crisis, yet the extent of the collapse is largely influenced by private motivations to borrow and lend. When the economy started showing signs of overheating, Beijing reinforced the bearish sentiment by implementing the Three Red Lines policy in August 2020. These credit constraints proved to be strict for bullish investors, given the significant over-leveraging of many of China's largest property firms and millions of individual investors. Once prices stabilize and begin to decline, speculative demand fades away. While consumers may still have genuine housing needs, speculative investors only participate if they are confident that prices will continue to rise. The ongoing slump represents a victory for bearish investors, rather than a policy failure. The downturn is unlikely to resolve soon, but the government could aim to distribute the losses more fairly. The significant surplus of unsold or partially constructed homes complicates efforts to halt the decline in real estate prices. This surplus of housing compared to the actual demand from Chinese citizens has led to the creation of real ghost cities, completely uninhabited. Estimates suggest there are between 50 to over 100 million vacant homes, many of which remain unfinished. Even if no additional apartments were built, it could take a decade or longer to absorb the existing surplus. Beijing recently attempted to preserve jobs for construction workers by encouraging state-owned banks to resume lending for incomplete construction projects that were halted due to developers losing their creditworthiness. However, this initiative will only increase the supply of unsold properties and worsen the price decline. If the government persists in allowing prices to drop until consumers and speculators perceive them as low enough, a price floor may eventually emerge. However, this floor could potentially be set too low, resulting in sluggish sales and making it challenging for real estate developers and investors to repay the loans obtained for constructing or purchasing these units, ultimately leading to widespread bankruptcies. Such a wave of bankruptcies could pose a threat to the Chinese financial system, particularly to the unregulated shadow banks that have heavily invested in China's real estate bubble. While many experts tend to attribute economic collapses to government actions, the true cause of China's downturn lies in the prolonged period of rapid growth during which precarious and unsustainable debts accumulated. As the saying goes, the higher they climb, the harder they fall. China is experiencing an economic slowdown after a period of rapid growth. How it manages this real estate market crisis and public debt will determine the future of the country as a global economic leader, potentially surpassing even the United States.